Okay, guys, we're back, and we're with Michael Purcell today. So let me tell you just a minute, a little bit about Michael. How are you doing today, Michael? Are you good? Doing great. What about you, Coach Art? Great. Great. Thanks. Uh, so I, I uh, kids, I know Michael because uh, he played on the soccer team that I coached at Clearwater Central Catholic High School, and uh, he's now an attorney. He's uh, in Washington, D.C. I'm going to let Michael... Uh, tell you guys a little bit about himself. Michael, tell us about your journey and how you got to this chair that you're sitting in right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so like Coach Hart said, I got to know him back when I was in high school. Uh, he was my soccer coach for four years when I was at Clearwater Central Catholic. I graduated from there in 2012. So I'm getting up there in years. That happened quickly. Um, then I moved up to New York City. I went to Columbia University um, for college, and I actually stayed there for law school. Uh, when I was in law school, I decided um, that I wanted to move down to Washington, D.C. I um, was really very fortunate to get a job at a big law firm where I now work, uh, and I actually do sort of health care law. So um, it's been kind of a long journey, but a lot of, uh, a lot of good fortune, hard work, and, and everything along the way, and a lot of people supporting me. That was pretty key. Tell me where I am. Guys, Michael is uh, is quite modest. Uh, when he was at, first of all, you guys probably don't understand, Columbia University is one of the top schools in the world, really, not just in America. And just to get in Columbia, you have to be, that's, you have to be a, a cut above. And then while Michael was at Columbia, I know that he accomplished a lot of things and was the editor of a, of a law review and some, did quite well. So, so Michael, just like you guys, Michael underplays himself, which is which is great. And part of why I love him. And when uh, when he was playing for us at CCC, he was the same way. Uh, he uh, he was quiet, but he produced. He always produced the goods. Uh, but Michael, what I want to uh, to ask you is, do you remember PE when you were uh, a, about eight, nine, ten, eleven years old? I do. Yeah. What was it like? Where did you go to school, and what was it like? So I went to St. Cecilia, um, another, you know, small sort of private uh, school. Um, I remember PE when I was, you know, around that age being um, kind of a free-for-all in, in a strange way. Um, I think, you know, one thing for me is I was always a bit more naturally a student than I was an athlete. Uh, and so PE for me um, was like a nice way to release energy, but it didn't actually have sort of the structure that I think would have would have helped me to, you know, really take advantage of everything that PE can, you know, can be um, at, at that age and in, in school. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, Michael, we've, I've sent you a video of our kids performing mm -hmm. uh, our Focus on Achievement Night performance last year. And mm -hmm. last year, uh, the, uh, the theme for the year was the new kid at school. And uh, this year, our theme was, it's not just the bricks, it's the mortar. And we've had themes every year, and we build a routine around that theme. Mm -hmm. What impression did you have of, uh, of these elementary school kids operating to music the way that, that, that you saw? Well, I thought it was awesome. I mean, I think that something that I've always, you know, felt about Coach Hart and, uh, and the way that he structures things is that the way that he, you know, works a team, works a PE class is to create sort of a, a personal growth. And I think that, you know, what you see in those messages is the emphasis that you put um, not only on, you know, the individual, but on the team kind of all, you know, becoming part of something bigger. Um, and I, I thought, you know, you could really see um, that these kids were getting something, I guess, more than just, you know, you can think of PE as just running around um, or you can think of PE as something I guess, um, you know, more more deep and more meaningful. And I, I think that that's, you got the sense that they were taking advantage of, you know, everything that PE can be. That's cool. That's cool. Now, I know you're not a teacher or a coach, <clears throat> and you're still kind of young, although you said you're getting on in years. Of course, you know, compared to me, you didn't get the <laughs> chance to see the dinosaurs like I did. But, uh, but from your experience, um, do you, are you aware of, other schools that are doing big Broadway productions like this or anything like this? Yeah, not, certainly not uh, that I know of. I actually, you know, I'm really lucky that a lot of people that I know um, from college and stuff have gone on to be teachers and, you know, work at schools across the country. And I've 
never really seen anything quite like that um, from a PE program, no. That's well. That's cool. That's cool. I guess. I hope it's good. If we're it's if we're the only good miles, yeah. <laughs> if you're the only one doing something, you better hope that it's good. Um, so, Michael, uh, what do you think PE should be about in the year 2020 and going forward? What what promise does PE hold? I mean, I think what PE, at least you know, when I look back on it, what I think you know, I I got from my PE courses and what I wish you know would emphasize more. Uh, is the kind of importance of, of team building. You know, I sort of mentioned one of the things that I've always that I appreciated about your the way you ran our soccer program was the emphasis on sort of the the team or the group as a whole. I think that you know it's really important to use PE, use athletics um, as a way to sort of see yourself as part of something bigger. You know, we're all our own people, but in the end, there's something beyond us uh, as individuals and. And I think the PE really holds um, sort of the key to learning that from an early age and cultivating, you know, who you are as part of a team, part of a community. Uh, and so that's why I think the way that, you know, when, when you see those videos that you post, you get to see, you know, these students already understanding that they are, they can be part of something great that's bigger than themselves. Michael, that's awesome. That's what we try to do, exactly what you just said. Um, your uh, your to close it up. You're talking to some potential future teachers uh, and uh, future attorneys as well. I'm sure. Um, what advice would you give to the future teachers that are watching? I mean, I think the main thing that I've learned recently uh, that I think it's important to sort of recognize is the importance of pushing yourself, challenging yourself. Um, because that helps you not only become better, but it helps you help the people around you become better. So, you know, like I said, I was more a student than I was an athlete, and I think that I appreciated putting myself out of my comfort zone because I think that that helped me improve, and then that helped me, you know, with my best friends and the people that I work with. Uh, I'm then able to, because I'm growing, help them, you know, figure out what it is they can improve on um, and help them figure out ways of, you know, figuring out how to do that. So um, I would say my advice would be always make yourself, always work to make yourself better, you know, put yourself out of your comfort zone and work hard, particularly in those things that are not necessarily easy for you. That's fantastic. Michael, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to uh, give the kids uh, a couple of questions about this little interview, and I really appreciate it. Have a good yeah. day. You too. Have a great one. Take care.